Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Escape the Dark Sector. This is the newest release from Theme Born Games, who previously did Escape the Dark Castle, which is one of my favorite light adventure games to play with my son. And now Theme Born has taken the system to space, so let's check out a full playthrough and see how it goes. Quick disclaimer, by the way, that I was sent a review copy of this game. As usual, I'll quickly go through setup and the basics of play. If you want to skip right to the action, just use the timestamps. And if you like the content here at the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon, joining the conversation on Slack or Discord, listen to our podcast every Sunday, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So the first part of setup is creating the mission deck. And you'll see you have five types of card here. You have start cards, boss cards, and three acts of chapter cards of increasing difficulty. At the bottom of your mission deck will be one random boss card. On top of that will be four random cards from the Act 3 deck, four cards from the Act 2 deck, and four cards from the Act 1 deck. Finally, you put a random start card on your combined stack and you're ready to go. Next, you choose your crew members, either selecting them or randomly, and you have to have between two to four crew members, or even in solo, you have to control two characters. Now, they really want you to choose so your skills are complementary, but I think it's more fun to maybe die, so I'm going to pick randomly. So first, we have Lieutenant Smith, very strong, fairly wise, not very cunning. And backing Smith up, we have Lieutenant Tanner, very wise, somewhat cunning, and not very strong. So we actually ended up somewhat balanced, although cunning will be a problem. Then you're supposed to each select one of six cybernetic implants, but again, just for difficulty, I'm going to randomize them. So Smith will have advanced targeting, helping him uh, shoot people in range combat. And Tanner will have a neural override, helping her with skill checks outside of combat. And now we have to prep our medical record, which will track our health. I like to use one sheet for solo, but you can use one for each player. And everyone starts with 12 health, so I just like to make a little dot. That can be Lieutenant Tanner. And given some separation, that can be Smith. And basically we'll have like kind of a fun sort of, a, I don't know, what is that, an EKG chart as uh, their health goes up and down throughout the game. Each character has a unique die with their name on it, so you get those for the characters. And besides some other basic stuff like getting your dice ready and shuffling the item deck, you're good to go. So the rules of play for Escape the Dark Sector are pretty straightforward, and if you watch my Escape the Dark Castle video, you'll already recognize a lot of the stuff here. They only added a few new elements. The basic idea is you have to push through the entire mission deck trying to get items and power up your characters enough so that when you reach the boss at the very bottom of the deck, you can defeat them and win the game, escaping this galactic prison you've been put in. Before revealing the top card of the mission deck, you have to select between all the players or your characters in solo who will be considered you for the next card, the person that will be affected by special effects. And then you flip the card, Often they'll give you options, like here you can move on, turning the next chapter card, or you can try to hack something doing a skill check. And these skill checks are pretty straightforward, generally asking for one of the three results. Uh, wisdom, which is the starburst, strength, which is the fist, and cunning, which is the eyeball. And they'll generally tell you how many attempts you have, like you might only have one chance, although some items can mitigate that and let you re-roll or change your results. And the cards will usually give you results for success and failure. The most common success result is getting more item cards. Most common failure is losing hit points from your character or all the characters. Item cards have three basic types. They can be close combat weapons, range weapons, or gear. And they can take up one slot or, when they're horizontal, two slots of your inventory. And a given character can hold four items. So like this, for example, would completely fill out our inventory for one character. Gear usually takes the form of luck mitigation and healing items. So like this one, it says after rolling your die, you can change the result to cunning. You have a lot of things like that. Ranged weapons will give you a certain amount of ammo and a fire rate and different effects. They're the most complicated, but we'll get to that with combat in a moment. Whereas close combat weapons are generally more simple. They'll just modify things like give you an extra reroll or make more damage happen when you hit somebody, those kind of things. After you finish resolving each mission card, whether you succeeded or failed, you can trade items freely between each other, use items like healing, and if you have a ranged weapon, you can freely reload one ammo die on it. And that's honestly pretty much it, except for combat, which is really where the rules depth of the game comes in. So when you first start a combat encounter, you're going to put out some chapter dice, as indicated here. If they show dice matching one of the three symbol types, you just put those dice out. So here we have two strength and two cunning. But then when you have the little silhouette of a person, that means you roll a number of dice additionally equal to the number of players, so uh, or characters, I should say. 
So here, wow, we would have uh, just a ton of strength and cunning and no wisdom to defeat this guy. And this is basically his hit points. We need to take all these away to win. Now, some combats will force you to start in ranged or close combat, but usually you have the choice. Uh, the key thing is, though, if you're in ranged combat, the second you resolve a close combat round, you can't go back to ranged combat. Once you're in a melee, you gotta stay there. In a given round of combat, each character has to pick one of the available options. Although the key thing is, one of the characters in the party always has to pick the basic option. Shooting with ranged combat, or fighting with close combat. So nobody can flank, or reload, or do any of that other stuff unless at least one person is shooting. Shooting is pretty straightforward. You need to have a ranged weapon with ammo dice on it. You'll see right here, this one has a max of one electric energy die. And the number of dice on it need to be equal to or greater than its minimum fire rate. This one just shoots one die at a time. But if you had something like the battle rifle, you see you can hold two ammo and shoot one or two round bursts. Though in this case, having even one ammo on it would be enough for it to shoot. You pick the fire rate you want to shoot at, although there's only one choice here, and you also roll the black hit die to see if they shoot you. If you get a blank, they miss you. If you get the hit symbol, your character suffers as much damage as they have in the crosshair, which would be one damage for this guy. So he's less dangerous in ranged combat where he deals one damage versus close combat where he deals two. If you get a normal hit, you check how that is valued. In this case, this guy's pretty strong against energy attacks. He only loses one chapter die. If I had attacked with a projectile weapon, each hit would have subtracted two chapter dice, and an explosive weapon would have done three dice each. And for however much damage I cause, one in this case, I can choose whichever dice I like and remove them from his hit point pool. But do know that every weapon has a special symbol, which is usually bad. Like here you do hit for one, but you also overheat your weapon and lose one hit point. And projectile and explosive weapons also have a jam result, which means you don't waste the ammo you would have shot, but also your attack doesn't happen, although they can still hit you. So the other actions you can take in ranged combat, as long as at least somebody is shooting, you can reload, adding one ammo die back to one of your weapons. You can activate the drone, putting your die here to heal yourself one hit point. But that uses it up for the entire combat, both for ranged and close combat. So once one character does that, it's out of commission. You can throw another character one of your items, although they can't use it this round. Or you can just take cover, which means you don't get shot at, but you also don't get to do anything meaningful on your turn. The final ranged combat action, which again only one character can do per combat, is to flank. They put their die here, and they roll a hit die as indicated, although the max damage is always one, regardless of the enemy's actual attack value. And what flanking does is, basically before the next combat round, this character gets a special flank round. They can either attack in ranged combat or close combat. They can charge in and start it, although again, that will negate the chance to do ranged combat anymore. And they roll their attack just like a regular combat, except in this case, they don't get shot back or they can't get hurt if it's close combat. And if they hit and deal at least one damage, they get to do an extra wild damage of their choice. All right, flipping over to close combat, again, somebody has to fight, and then other characters can choose these actions. You can reload a weapon, even though you can't fight in ranged combat, you can still get your stuff ready. You can activate the drone if nobody's done so yet. You can trade, you can take cover, those are all the same. Now, the key difference in close combat is you only roll your die, the enemy never rolls theirs. If you get a single result and a matching die is in the pool, you take it out. But then you suffer the enemy's damage, so two in this case, unless you have taken out all of them with your team this turn. But if you get a double result with the little shield around it, you can take up to two of those icons away, so these two dice here. And the key thing is the shield will protect you from returning damage for this round, so I wouldn't take any damage from this guy. And final important part of combat, this is the number of item cards you get to draw and distribute among your team members after you defeat the enemy, assuming you survive. And again, you win the game by getting all the way down to the boss and defeating them. You lose the game if even a single character ever goes down to zero hit points, so keep your friends alive. So with the explanation out of the way, let's see if we can escape the Dark Sector. So remember, we always have to choose our first U, so Lieutenant Smith is taking the lead for the first card. Overriding the security protocol of the holding cells was no easy task, but now real danger lurks at every turn. You dart from your cell to the control room opposite. There, a map of the station flickers on a faulty monitor. You frantically search for the location of your ship. Oh, nice. Remove one Act 3 chapter card from the mission deck without looking at it. We just had an easier time getting through. The map vanishes, replaced by an urgent transmission addressing all members of security. They have orders to eliminate you. You each grab a sidearm from the rack before setting off at speed. 
Draw one starting weapon card for each member of the crew, then turn the first chapter card. So most of these would have given us more stuff, some starting items and such, but here our advantage was having fewer cards to get through. So I'm taking out a random three, bye-bye. And we each get a random starting ranged weapon. There are four of these. Smith will have a ray gun, and Tanner will have a slug pistol, which is pretty much like the ray gun, except that it can jam, and on the special result, it does double damage instead of hurting you like the ray gun does. And when you gain a new ranged weapon, you gain ammo dice equal to its maximum, so we are fully loaded and ready to go. All right, nobody got hurt yet, so let's go ahead and have Tanner be you this time. And remember, she's better at out-of-combat skill checks, so it's probably a good idea for her to go when the hit points are equal anyway. Oh, he doesn't look very nice. Out of the darkness, a frantic prisoner sprints toward you, narrowly evading a barrage of crackling laser fire from behind him. You, and remember that means Lieutenant Tanner, lose one hit point as a shot meant for him strikes you. Okay, as a group, choose one option. We can let him through. The salty old captain is grateful and hastily rewards you before vanishing into the dark. We get a free item card. Or attack. It's payback time. Begin combat. And that would get us two item cards. Well, he's a prisoner too. It wasn't really his fault we got shot. And I think one item card is better than taking damage from combat. So uh, let's let him get away and just take one. Uh, we'll mark Tanner down one hit point to 11. We draw our card. Shock prod. Once per round of close combat, when you hit... You may roll again and apply both results. Nice. Now, neither of them is especially good at close combat, but Smith's especially good at range combat with the advanced targeting. So I'll give Tanner the shock prod. And the cybernetics never count against your inventory, but she now has one, two, three of her four possible items. And yeah, I know I'm covering up the faces here, but I just want to kind of keep things in screen. All right, we're going again. Now that Tanner's hurt, let's have Smith take the lead. Oh, you doing all right there, buddy? A wrong turn leads you right into the guard barracks, row upon row of slumbering security personnel. Fortunately for you, a lone guard is on watch duty. She sees you. You both freeze. Okay, you, Smith, make a choice. Okay, I can run. Run for cover, roll for cover, and sprint into the darkness, but the guard gets off one shot before you vanish. You must roll a hit die. And you see the damage here is one, so if I roll the hit, I will take a damage. By the way, if you're curious, there are two miss sides and four hit dies, so two-thirds chance I take the damage. Or steal and run. You swipe something from the nearest berth, then run for it. You must roll two hit dice, then draw an item card. Huh. I'm sure I'll get more items later. Let's just go for one. Come on, Smith, dodge it. Yes! All right, so Smith was so cool there, he's going to lead again. Hey there, buddy. Uh, he's getting a little bit locked up. Hurrying onward through the detention level, you pass a cell where a curious creature is detained behind thick humming laser bars. Seeing you begins to speak, a series of wet, clicking, melancholy sounds in an alien language you cannot understand. You gather it means you no harm, when from within the folds of its slimy mass it produces an object. It carefully passes it through the bars, gesturing that you should take it. Draw an item card. Just then, the shouting of angry guards reaches your ears. You hurry onward, never learning the fate of this benevolent being. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. But thank you for the item with no danger. Unmarked pills. I don't recommend ever using those in your real life. So I can discard this to restore one hit point to a crew member. Give it to Smith since uh, he has more room. And don't forget, we can freely trade those after any chapter card. I don't want to use it on Tanner yet because we always have the medical bot that can heal us for one in a combat. So, you know, want to wait for that. But it's definitely there to help us later. Smith, everything's going great with you at the helm. Do it again. Oh, this doesn't look good. As the doors ahead hiss open, slimy tentacles fly out and seize you, dragging you into the darkness beyond. Okay, so Smith loses one hit point and must immediately begin close combat alone for one round, then as a group choose one option. All right, so let's uh, resolve that before we get to the option choosing. So this monster has uh, two strength, one cunning and one wisdom to start. Gains, okay, so uh, cunning is the weakest. That's good for us since we're not very good at it. Smith's down to 11 health, though I'm sure that'll get worse. And Smith has to engage in one round of close combat alone, so can't really do anything fancy, just has to fight. And unfortunately, he doesn't have the shock prod, so he can't uh, gain any bonuses here. Oh, awesome though. He did roll a shield, so no damage. He would have taken one, and he takes away both of the wisdom results. Good start. All right, now we can evade. All members of the crew lose one hit point, pulling you from the grip of the killer organism. Turn the next chapter card. Or attack. Continue close combat with all members of the crew. What? For three items and only one damage? Yeah, we're attacking this guy. Now, we can't do ranged combat since uh, close combat already started. 
And looking at the dice results remaining, remember Smith is by far the best at strength, whereas Tanner is terrible at it, so I want Smith to fight. So I'm going to have Tanner use the single-use medical droid for this combat. We'll have to wait until the next one to use it again. And that'll get her back to full health. That means Smith is fighting it alone again. Let's see how he does. Oh my gosh! Smith, you are beautiful. All right, I could have one of them take cover for this third round, but I think with Tanner having the shock prod, which remember, if I roll at least a hit, so get either of those symbols, I get to roll again and apply both results. Let's go for both of them attacking and see how it goes. Come on! Oh, that doesn't look great. So neither of them hit because there is no wisdom left. And Tanner didn't hit, so he doesn't get to use the shock prod. So they both lose one hit point. All right, whatever. We're doing it again. Okay. Well, neither of them gets hurt. Or sorry, you know, I said they both lose one hit point, but Smith didn't because he had a double last time. And this time they don't take any damage. So Tanner's down one, back to 11. Okay, that was Tanner. Awesome. So she gets a uh, fist. She gets to roll again. Ah, still no cunning. We knew this was going to be a problem. So she's taken two damage total. Uh, Smith just cannot be stopped. Okay, there we go. Got him. So Smith didn't take any damage after that initial pull through the door, but Tanner's back down to ten. This guy was filled with loot. Oh, man, a lot of it is a double what we can hold. This is not going to be good. So you've got a force field when you would lose any amount of hit points. Discard to lose none. That's great when you have some crazy effect that does like two or three all at once. Got a pulse rifle. Holds two energy ammo. Can fire in one or two. Uh, but it does have the same effect as the ray gun. Can overheat and hurt us. And an alien blade. Once per round of close combat, when you hit, you may remove an additional chapter die of the same type. Alrighty. What if, uh... <laughs> what if we make Tanner the... The Angel of Death over here and give her both an Alien Blade and a Shock Pro. We just gotta hope she hits. We can go and use the Unmarked Pills to heal her back to 11. Because remember at the end of chapters you can kind of trade and heal freely before you finally decide what your uh, final inventory will be. And then of course Smith with the better ranged combat will take the Pulse Rifle. And we actually have room for everything else. We just have to get rid of uh, Tanner's Slug Pistol. But you know, let's replace the Ray Gun with a Slug Pistol. Because that way we have uh, two different types instead of being all energy. Because some uh, enemies are better defended against it. Alright, we're looking pretty good. We made it through all of Act 1 with only one damage each and some pretty good kit. So let's have Tanner with her Neural Override go first in our first Act 2 card. It looks kind of like a Borg or something. You encounter a Vision Seller peddling the very latest in Sensorium Stimware. He offers you his trades and your choice of experience. Maybe it is trodes. It's like a trode, something you connect to your head. I don't know. Each member of the crew must choose one option. Refuse. You don't mess with that stuff. Never have, never will. Trade for a blist vision. Discard an item card. You jack in and gain one hit point as your experience glorious revitalizing sensations. Uh, test something experimental. There's no cost, but can you handle it? Roll wisdom. Okay, success. Vision cannot be expressed in words. You gain three hit points. Or failure, the trip turns bad, and you rip the trodes from your temples, unable to shake the disturbing images. You lose one hit point. Well, clearly Tanner's not going to discard one of her uh, double items, and she's only hurt one. So she's not going to jack in at all. But realistically, we're probably going to get some more items, so let's get rid of this slug pistol to heal uh, Smith back to full health. All right, thank you, futuristic neural implant guy. So with Smith back to full, let's have him go first. He also has that force field in case there's a really bad surprise. What are you doing on this uh, prison ship? An intriguing noble flanked by bodyguards stops you. They bring forward a selection of items he wishes to trade. I insist, he smirks. As a group, choose one option. Discard any two items to take one of the revealed... Oh, I gotta reveal three item cards. So discard two items to take one of them. Uh, he's most pleased. Turn the next chapter card. So we can kind of make a bad trade where he gets twice as much as us. Or refuse to trade. The nobleman becomes enraged. He strides off into the darkness, instructing his goons to deal with you. Then we get to keep all three revealed items, although we don't have enough space for that. Well, let's see what they are. We got another force field. Brain stems let you change your result to wisdom, the starburst, after the fact, which can be pretty nice. And stun grenade, you discard it in ranged combat as a shoot action. Uh, the enemy is stunned and nobody rolls hit dice this round, which isn't really that good in a two-player game. Certainly stronger in three or four where you all get to benefit from it. So if I did trade, I guess I would want the force field or the brain stims, but neither one is exciting me much. And I forgot to load my pulse rifle. I guess the question becomes, 
Do I want to fight these fairly tough guys to get only one weapon I want to actually keep? I mean, they do two damage in both types of combat, and they'll have six dice. Ah, darn, I don't know. Let's throw away the alien blade and the force field, get a replacement force field, and we'll just won't fight this guy. I don't want to take the risk. All right, get out of here, you wheeler and dealer. Okay, Smith still going forward with his force field. Oh my gosh. There's a piercing screech as an alien lets out its hunting cry, dropping onto you from some concealed perch in the darkness overhead. You must roll cunning in one attempt now. Oh man, Smith has one in six chance of getting that. Or lose two hit points. Then as a group, choose one option and begin close combat. Again, no range combat. I want to use my guns. All right, so let's uh, see if he can dodge their attack first. Okay, come on, Smith. That's not it. I have no mitigation. But you know what? You saw how quickly inventory space runs out. I'm going to go ahead and use the force field to cancel those two damage. And hopefully I'll get some more stuff to replace it. So you'll see they often give you kind of these risk-reward choices like this. I can fight in defensive formation, where he'll have seven dice total, but only do one damage to each of us when he hits. Or corner it, where he'll only have five dice total, but two damage. Double damage for only two fewer dice. I'm going to go for the defensive formation and take it easier. And this also means we don't start with any cunning, which you already saw we aren't very good at. We didn't get any at all. I don't know if that's great. So Tanner's best at the wisdom results, Smith's best at strength, Tanner has her shock prod to help her do more damage, hopefully. So let's have them both attack this time. We can use the uh, medical bot or take cover later. Okay, so Tanner did hit. Oh, and Smith hit with a shield. Tanner gets to roll again with her shock prod. So double wisdom, although she will still get hit. And double strength from Smith. Nice job. But Tanner has taken one. She's down to ten. But you know what? I'm going to have her use the medical bot right now and just have Smith fight by himself. Come on, Smith, take this guy down. Okay, so he's going to take one damage since he didn't get a double, but he got their last uh, wisdom away. Now, with only two left, I think they'll both fight, although Tanner's terrible at strength. Maybe she should take cover again and let Smith go it alone, yeah. Okay, he got one of them, but he'll take another damage, and we'll try that again. Yes, okay, so we finished him off, doesn't take damage the last time. I don't think I missed a damage there. I think Smith is at 10 and Tanner's at 11. We're getting two new items. Stale rations, it's guard to restore one hit point to your crew member, nice. And power stims, after rolling your crew die, before replying results, change the result to might. That's definitely going to Tanner since uh, she is terrible at it otherwise. So Smith can hold the rations. We'll probably use those in a second. Alrighty, we are cruising through act two. And don't forget act three is a bit shorter than it would be otherwise. In this laboratory full of experimental technology, a gravitational wave emitter... Oh, shoot, I didn't say who was you. Uh, let's see. Tanner has more life, so yeah, Tanner is you. A gravitational wave emitter thrums menacingly. As you attempt to cross the room, your steps become heavier and you are barely able to drag your suddenly cumbersome gear to the other side. Okay, each member of the crew must try to roll might in one attempt. Apply these results to each member of the crew individually. On success, you reach the exit and slump against the wall to rest. On failure, you must lose one hit point or discard an item and then try again. And if you fail three attempts, you finally reach the exit breathless and exhausted. Now let's have Smith try first. Better at strength. Attempt one. So that's uh, take a damage or lose an item. Well, I guess uh, he can use or lose the uh, healing item. Attempt two. Come on. So he'll take a damage. And attempt three. There we go. So one damage and loss an item. Meanwhile, uh, Tanner's got the power stims, so she can use those if necessary. Let's see if she can get lucky. No. So I guess I might as well use them. All right, so, wow. We went down uh, to very few items very quickly. But here we are going into Act 3. Slightly less prepared than I would like. Uh, Tanner's going to go first. She's got 11 health to Smith's 9. Oh, this does not look good. In this loading bay, a cargo bot has gone haywire and slain its keepers. It now wields their weaponry, and you appear to be next in line to suffer its wrath. You agree with a flurry of laser fire. You must roll a hit die, then begin combat. And now he does two damage in both forms. So let's see if Tanner, leading the way, can dodge. Nope, she's down to nine as well. Once again, no cunning in the starting dice. I'm happy with that. Oh my gosh. And hey, we can finally show you range combat and flanking. So let's have Tanner flank. Remember, she still needs to roll a hit die, but she'll only take one damage, even though his normal damage is two. So there you go. And we'll hold on to her for a second, because she technically does her flank attack at the start of the next round, and then has a normal round as well. 
Meanwhile, Lieutenant Smith, let's uh, go all out with the Pulse Rifle Fire 2 shots. Oh, and I forgot to roll my hit die. That's good, though. Double hits, and uh, does take two damage, though. So Smith is down to seven, but he gets to take away two of the mech's dice, because look, one energy does one damage. Uh, he's actually specially resistant to ballistic damage, because you need two to deal one, and explosives would do three if we had any. So it seems to make sense to kind of even the numbers a bit and get rid of two of those. Now Tamara will get to do her close combat flank attack, because clearly she doesn't have a ranged weapon to attack with. And regardless of what she rolls, whether there's a shield or not, she won't get hit. Now she needs to not roll a cunning, or she also won't do anything to the robot. Okay, nice. So remember, she uh, since she hits, she's going to get plus one damage of any type she wants from the flank. And then her shock rod gives her another roll. Ah, darn it. Not the one we wanted. So I guess she'll do one and one. That makes sense, right? All right, so now we're in close combat. I think Smith's going to use the healing robot. Uh, he's at seven, she's at eight. So that'll bring him back to being tied. Let's see if Tanner can put this guy down. Come on. Okay, she didn't get hurt. She also didn't do anything, but <laughs> I'm still happy she didn't get hurt. And in the next round, I think it makes sense for them both to attack. Because Smith's really good at strength, and Tanner's really good at wisdom. So if they roll to their strengths, we should just win this thing. Okay, Tanner... I can technically say that she hit instead of Smith, because it's all simultaneous, so that'll give her a reroll. <laughs> One in six chance of getting that uh, strength. No. Uh, so Smith didn't get hurt. We are down to just a strength die, but Tanner takes two. She is halfway dead, which is not great going uh, into the boss soon. So she's definitely going to take cover while Smith, the strong one, tries to finish this guy off. Come on. He's down to six. He's going to try again then. Please. Okay, doesn't take any damage. Come on, Smith. Yes, there we go. Okay, so uh, down to six life. They're both down to six, but we did defeat the robot. Oh, gosh, all he's got is one item? Help me out here, buddy. All right, a rusty pipe. Once per round of close combat, when you miss, you may re-roll, applying only the second result. Oh, man, that's a good combo with the shock prod, because now if she misses on the first roll, she gets to roll again. If she hits, she can shock prod for a second roll, like in that. You know, I forgot her Neural Override, but I don't think I ever rolled a double. It lets me, if I roll a double, change it to any result. But, like, I think when she used the Strength Potion, she rolled a single. That's ah, hard to remember, but she'll go first here since they both have six life. Oh, my God! <laughs> a bomb! You enter this room just as the time trigger of a large explosive device reaches the final three seconds of its countdown. Your training kicks in and you rush forward to disable it. Okay, fast precision teamwork is needed to defuse the bomb. Each member of the crew must end up with the same trait showing on their crew die after a maximum of two rolls each. The rolls need not be simultaneous and can be made in any order. All right, guys, I think if we don't do this, we're probably dead. Let's have Smith go first since uh, she can change a double into anything. So Smith's first attempt got... Oh, wisdom, that's perfect. Okay, Tanner, you got this. Um, okay... So that's her first attempt, and that's what he's worst at, so she's definitely going to try to reroll that. Her second attempt, come on, get the wisdom. Get the wisdom, yes! All right, so we disarm the bomb. We stop because we both are showing the same trait. The timer freezes at zero. You did it. Turn the next chapter card. Give me a reward! <laughs> All right, so remember, we skipped uh, one of our four Act three. so after this, we fight the boss. Oh, we're down to half life and only have... Pipes and shock prods? Oh, I forgot. Uh, after every chapter card, you can do a reload action, so Smith would have fully reloaded the pulse rifle by now. Oh, man, looks like aliens or something. These cryopods hiss and smoke as clones of each of you step forth. I don't want to fight myself. Okay, to represent their clone, each crew must roll their crew die twice, placing a matching chapter die in front of them after each roll, but only a single if a double is rolled. Each crew must then begin combat separately against their clone. Rounds of these separate combats are fought simultaneously. Range combat and close combat can occur in the same round in different combats, but not within the same combat. Okay, and until they've defeated their clone, the only actions the crew member can take are shoot or fight. After killing their clone, all standard combat actions become available to them, plus the option to join any ongoing combat at the beginning of each round, taking no damage if they do so. Cool. All right, so Smith's clone has got a strength and a cunning. Oh, man, come on. Tanner's clone has a cunning <laughs> and a cutting. Oh my gosh. This is not looking great, everybody. Our Lieutenant Smith will certainly play to his strengths and shoot. And I totally forgot about advanced targeting, although the only time he shot, he hit with both, but he can reroll one of his ammo dice. Nice! Oh my gosh! So he defeated his guy with a burst of fire and took no damage in return. Awesome. Let's see if Tanner can do that well. Of course, she's going to be in close combat, so I need a cunning. 
No, but Rusty Pipe lets her reroll once. No, and no doubles. So she just takes two damage down to four. All right, Smith's going to run in and <laughs> I guess try to hit this guy while Tanner rests to get back to five with the medical droid. Might be a terrible idea since uh, he's even worse than she is. Come on, at least roll a double. Ah, or do nothing. Darn it. Okay, now he's down to four. She's at five. I think she's going to fight by herself. He'll cower in the corner. Okay, reroll on a miss. Come on, man. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, boom. Took him out. I didn't realize I had a double for that. <laughs> wow. Okay, so uh, Tanner's at five life. Smith's at four. Do you get two items, though? Okay, Alien Sludge. Discard to restore one hit point. So let's go in and get them both to five. And then Chrono Bomb. After rolling any number or type of dice, discard to roll them all, applying only the second result. Let's give that to Smith, who uh, did also get one bullet. Oh, you know... When Smith cowered, he could have actually reloaded his gun. So let's say he did that. That's clearly much better. So with five health each left, uh, Lieutenant Tanner armed with a shock prod and a rusty pipe. Lieutenant Smith with a pulse rifle and a chrono bomb. Let's uh, see if we can take this guy down. Oh, did I say guy? It's the mother of machines. So she's got like a little hovering pod with cannons there. Oh, and she laughs at all of our range attacks except for explosives. The pulse rifles are going to be almost useless. Your bravery is no match for my contraptions? You? Oh, I didn't even say who you was. Uh, I would have done Tanner since she has the better chance of rolling things. You are blasted by an EMP. You cannot use your cybernetic this combat and the drone is deactivated. Well, that worked out decently well because her cybernetic is useless in combat. But yeah, the drone not being able to heal, that's not great. Okay, begin combat. Uh, until you have disabled the pod by removing as many chapter dice as there are crew members, close combat damage is four, and oh my gosh, range combat is three. So if we don't hit her at least, so if we don't hit her at least twice in the first round, if we go into close combat, she'll be doing four damage instead of three. So I guess we'll start in range combat. Oh boy, this is gonna be a uh, tall order indeed. Now, let's see what she's got. Once again, no cunning to start. Probably wouldn't mind at least one. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of strength. Okay, Tanner's going to flank. Awesome. Did, oh, that would have only been one damage, so I'd rather uh, Smith miss, or be missed. So Smith's going to shoot all of his uh, ammo and try to dodge. I have the Chrono Bomb to do it a second time if I get hit. Okay, so even though I got hit... I can already reroll with advanced targeting, so let's uh, use the chrono bomb to reroll all of that again. I think I don't know. Oh, okay, so that was just straight up worse. So let's use advanced targeting to reroll that ammo die. Okay, so we did do just one damage to her, but the chrono bomb is gone, and Smith is down to just two life, which means like any hit will kill him. Oh God, we get to take away one of these dice. There we go. All right, now Tanner's flank attack. Smash this lady. Okay, re-roll with the rusty pipe, because that was terrible. All right, good, and then shock pride lets me roll again. So one wisdom, ah, come on. All right, and then with the uh, bonus from flank, I'll take away one strength. Oh, she's weak. Okay, so close combat damage is two, which means uh, Tanner can get hit twice and still be alive. Smith, if he gets hit even once, is dead. So it's just gonna be Tanner by herself for a little bit. Okay, so first attack with Tanner. Okay, that is a hit, so Rusty Pipe doesn't come, but Shock Prod does. Ah, no doubles, so Tanner's down to three life. This isn't good, because Strength is not her forte. Come on. Okay, good, she won't get hurt. Oh, no, if I re-roll the miss, I may re-roll. Okay, I'm not going to. <laughs> so now, a new round. Tanner still has three life. Yes! Okay, I get to roll again with a Shock Prod. Come on, give me a shield. Okay, or two fists. She's down to one life. But now uh, Smith comes running out of the cut, uh, trying to finish off the mother of machines. If either of them gets a strength, I win. If uh, neither of them gets a strength, then they'll both die. So, or I guess if they both get shields, that would be fine too. But come on, come on, give me a strength. Give me a strength. Yes, what? <laughs> both of them? Yeah. All right, so barely by the slimmest of margins, Lieutenant Smith and uh, Lieutenant Tanner make it back to their ship. Let's read the mission accomplished card. There she is, your beloved starship, the Equinox. You hurry aboard, fire up the converters, and breathe a sigh of relief to hear the main engines kicking in. Without delay, you override the restraints and blast clear of the station, rolling out into the immense spacescape beyond, heading for home at maximum velocity. All right, there we go. 
Barely survived. That was a fun ending there. So that was Escape the Dark Sector from Themeborn Games. If you want to see my thoughts on the game, I did a full review video. Just click the link that just popped up to watch that. Good gaming, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you at the next stop.